let's practice your ball through here. Live from Parkside Lanes in Aurora, Illinois, this is the PBA Extra Frame Parkside Lanes Open. Jeff Goodger, PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. And Randy, we just saw a roll-off for the number two spot, and now we will see the loser of that roll-off, Chris Prather, taking out Walter Ray Williams Jr. in our opening step ladder match. Yeah, Chris Prather got to choose what oil pattern he chose, the flat U.S. Open pattern. Uh, Walter Ray fared okay on that pattern as well. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how Chris Prather handles the nerves going up against the greatest player of all time. And the winner of that match gets the winner of that roll-off, J.R. Raymond, in the second spot. We don't know what pattern he's going to choose yet. will be interesting to see what he does and if the decision is affected by who he's facing. Right, and, and after every match, the, the lanes will be redressed, and it could be the, the exact same pattern, but it's going to be a fresh pattern for every game. And in the title match... Ryan Simonelli, he went from out of the show to the number one spot in that final game of qualifying. Yeah, I think it, it, it's a big advantage for Ryan. He's the only southpaw uh, in the stepladder finals, and I think that he is poised to win another PBA title out here. I, I think it's a huge advantage for him. Players finishing up their practice will get out to the lanes and get started shortly here at Parkside Lanes. Looks like Walter Ray is going to start this match. I'm just guessing based on him standing at the ball return. I'm not sure we didn't get any of that information. Um, Walter's name is up on the left. Prather on the right, but that doesn't mean anything. Players are waiting for the arrows. I believe Walter Ray is going to start the match, which means he will finish on the right lane. So Prather gets choice of starting lane and position based on finishing third, or excuse me, qualifying third. Walter Ray will start the match on the left. He will finish last on the right lane. And I look for him to be playing the outside part of the lane. And Walter Ray straight up first arrow. Get another look. Walter Ray, as Randy said, right up first arrow. And really the only thing that's changed in that form is a little less knee bend, glasses to be able to keep score with, and a little lower backswing. Prather over third arrow. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. Beautiful shot. See that ball rolling just inside third arrow, right at 16. Remember, we saw him in that roll-off right up the back, throwing it straight up five. You have to be versatile to be a superstar out on this tour. Chris Prather showing you he's got all the tools. Yeah, he chose this U.S. Open pattern, and this morning he had the highest block of anybody in the field by almost 30 pins on that pattern. A little left to target, a little soft look like, 3-6, avoids the big split. Targeting looked okay, just maybe a hair soft. find it interesting that uh, the strip pattern wasn't chosen. Looked to be the hardest of the three patterns. Well, the strip pattern was Walter Ray's best scoring pattern. Maybe that was factored in as well. And you know this how? Because I watched the whole tournament. It was even higher than the, than the uh, what was it, Chameleon? Um, well, I mean comparatively with the rest of the field. So I, I'm not looking at the actual numbers. You are correct. 
Walter Ray gained the most ground today on the strips pattern. Yeah, is what that, I I, that point I will not argue, but that last shot he just threw was left of Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> well, that's not hard, is it? Let's go with it. I, uh, okay. Walter Ray for the single pin. Of course, he will make it and even match through two frames. Nobody misses the five pin, Jeff. And if you do, you know what that means, right? That means you have an open frame. Yes. Okay. Back to bowling. All even through two. Standing room only. Right in front of us, we have some fans down lane, which means that everybody standing in front of us can hear every word. A little bit right, leaves a 2-8. A little bit left, goes through the nose of Brooklyn. It's the flat U.S. Open pattern. I believe it's 37 feet in length. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Well, now it's the 2-8 for Walter Ray. Not a give me. Not a gimme by any means. Actually, to make this, all you have to do is stand in the same spot, look at the same target, and miss a board left. And he does just that. And let's get a look at that U.S. Open pattern that they are on which they are competing right now. Yeah, but that graph is lying. <laughs> you need just a straight line all the way across. That that makes the lanes look like they're walled from out, and they're not. That's a good point. for Prather. Fell off, it, fell off it just, excuse me, Jeff, fell off it just a little bit, but still gets to the right spot when it enters the pins, kicks the 10 out. So an early small lead over Walter Ray Williams Jr. Now Prather looking for the first double of this match. Yeah, good one there. Yeah, this is a little bit farther right of the last shot on the left lane, and a good hand gets it back to the 1-3, and again, the 6 going to the sidewall, taking care of the 10-pin. I always like throwing that shot and watching the 6-pin going to the sidewall and laying dead in the right gutter for a flat 10. Yeah, good shot, but ring and 10 for Walter Ray. Again, not much margin of error. He's got to be pretty close to that first arrow with the right rotation speed. And one of the best spare shooters in the history of our sport right there, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. I think in the 120 or 30 shows he's made as we see J.R. Raymond practicing off to the left. I think Walter Ray's probably missed a total of maybe three spares on television. The only player to ever make the big four on TV. Obviously, the pins don't know who he is. Yeah. Two shots in a row, two different lanes. He liked them both, and same thing. Yep, both good shots. Just the ball not going through the pins the right way. There's the difference. Two 10 pins for Walter Ray. Prather kicks the 10 out both times in the third and fourth. And there's really the difference in the match right now. Walter Ray could have doubled up there and pulled to within two. PBA Tour Commissioner and his son, Tom Clark, and his son, Rory on hand for the Step ladder finals. Sitting next to the proprietor, Kurt Frieders. That one had a good touch to it. 
turkey for Prather. That looked like an all-stage shot. You know, the good hands people? The good hands people. Because that had some good hand in it. Yeah. I just made that one up. I like it. Yeah, it was good. Well done. It was good. Extra frame, folks. Coming to you live from Parkside Lanes. Pray they're looking for a big early lead. Crosses over. Nine count for Prather. What does Walter Ray do here, Randy? Rank two 10 pins in a row. Keep, he keeps throwing it right there. Exactly what he did and kind of stands at the line praying a little bit for it to get out this time. And it does. Second strike of the game for Williams trying to get back into this match with Chris Prather. He keeps throwing it right there, and he wills the pins down. He imposes his will. Oh. Not good. Max score now for Walter Ray Williams Jr. 214. Prather's already at 219. So barring any disaster, Prather keeps doing what he's doing. This is going to be a runaway. And he will move on to face J.R. Raymond on the mystery pattern. Uh-oh. In the words of Bob Euchre, just a bit outside. And not exactly the easiest uh, spare attempt coming up. No. Oh. The one, two, five, seven. So what happened there? Uh, he got a little too comfortable. He got a couple shots to the right that, that fed back to the pocket, and that was just an errant shot right. And he left himself with a mess. Yeah, hey, throw it and throw it and pray. Who knew who knows what was gonna happen? Kind of straight up the back up ten. We could actually use that for a strike ball if you wanted to, looks like. A couple of options for Chris, but nonetheless it's a clean frame in the seventh with that errant shot. Better. Looks like this was a little bit left. Looks like he's migrating a little bit in. That was around 17 at the arrows. Shot before on, on that lane last time looked like 15, 16. Walter Ray running out of time. And now max score 204 if he converts. Greatest player in the history of the sport, all-time titleist. Some will argue that with the likes of Pete Weber, Earl Anthony, but he is certainly the winningest player on the national tour with 47 wins. 99 combined with 
regionals, PBA 50 events. Pete Weber, 99 total wins as well. What a year Weber had on the senior tour this year. Six wins. It's like printing money. The human ATM machine. Yeah, win or lose here, and it's coming down to the 10th frame. And again, Prather needs to just stay clean, and he'll advance. But what an event for Walter Ray at this stage in his career that you have to assume is at some point going to be coming to an end. I mean, he's getting on the other side of 50, and this is a young man sport. This is a power sport. Pretty amazing week for Walter Ray. Again, Randy. Yep, got it to that same spot down lane. Now a board a board or two left of that and it's flush. But that just hit the cliff and well, it fell off. That's back to back shots like that on that right lane. You get a little too careless here and wind up getting beat. 2-0-4 max for Walter Ray. Prather cleans it up. Careful. You know, I had this vision of him guarding against missing the head pin right and going through the face for big four, giving Walter Ray a, sh a chance at, at getting up in the 10th and beating him. But uh, nice break there. It was almost the 4 9 10. But he trips all three out, and he will advance to take on J.R. Raymond. Chris Prather moves on. We will be back. Well, I think there are festivities in between matches, and we'll be back with the semifinal match coming up shortly. Randy Peterson, Jeff Goodger from Parkside Lanes in Aurora, Illinois. Chris Prather advances, gets a rematch from the roll-off with J.R. Raymond coming up next. And I'm here with Pete Garlock, Director of Sales at the Aurora Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And Pete, for the first time out here in Aurora at Parkside Lanes, you got to be impressed with the crowd and everything that's happened with this great event here. First time for the Parkside Lanes Open. Oh yeah, we are. We couldn't be more thrilled by the way this worked out. Um, 
Friday, I was told you, you couldn't get from side to side. You had to walk <laughs> sideways to get through people. There were so many people here. Uh, the barbecue last night, uh, the, the weather didn't cooperate with us, but that was a that was still a fun uh, addition that, uh, that uh, Sean uh, Rash came up with. Uh, the band was great. The food was great. Uh, but the bowling has been amazing. Just the, the number of competitors that are here, world-class competitors. It's It's been amazing. I don't think Aurora's ever seen anything like this before. Yeah, and I'm sure there's lots of other sporting events that you host, high school, collegiate action, that type of thing as well. If people have uh, Little League baseball players and they're coming here yeah. for a tournament, they probably should check out the uh, Aurora website. Absolutely. Uh, our our uh, website is enjoyaurora.com, and uh, we are fast becoming the home for a lot of amateur and professional sports. Uh, we have so many venues that are uh, specific to certain types of sports. Uh, Stewart uh, Sports Complex has eight diamonds out there and 31 soccer fields. I mean, it's huge. Uh, the Great Lakes Volleyball Center has 12 volleyball courts under one roof. Uh, we have 17 tennis courts uh, under two roofs. Um, and uh, there's a... a uh, Supreme Courts uh, basketball, four high school basketballs under one roof. It's amazing. And, uh, there's a beautiful golf course on Hill Road on the way here. I drove by it the other yeah. day. I'm like, I wish I brought the clubs. Yeah, Phillips uh, Phillips uh, Park is uh, is incredible. And actually, uh, Orchard Valley uh, was just ranked as one of the number uh, the top uh, courses in the in the state, uh, uh, top public courses. So anyone can come here and play. But I, it's I'm I'm blown away. I, I've only been here about six months, and I am just so blown away by the the not just how many, but how great these facilities are that we have. Yeah, and for those that aren't interested or maybe need to kill time while the kids playing basketball or or football. Lots of shopping in the area as well. I had to go pick up some supplies the other day. I'm like, going, holy cow, you, anything you need is within like two miles of the place. Did you go to Chicago Premium Outlets? I've passed it. I might hit it on the way home. That is, from what I understand, that's our number one attraction. It's, uh, it's right off of 88. People need to stop by there. It's amazing. They just remodeled. They just got bigger. Hopefully, they'll keep getting bigger. But yeah, there's a lot of shopping. Fox Valley Mall. There's a lot of specialty stores in the area. Um, there's lots for kids to do. Blackberry Farms. Uh, we've got this amazing race. Raging Waves Water Park in Yorkville. You know, our bureau encompasses not just Aurora, but it's it's 10 communities. So it's the the Aurora area. So there there is a lot to offer, you know, any age. And if people want to check out whatever they need to find out about Aurora, what's that website again? Uh, enjoyaurora.com. You can't help but enjoy Aurora when you're here. And I have so far, and I know everybody in the Extra Frame, has, Extra Frame crew has as well. And uh, Sean Weber is enjoying it right now as well. So we're going to get back to the bowling action here. Thanks again, Pete. Thank
semifinal match coming up next. PBA Extra Frame Parkside Lanes Midwest Open. Jeff Goodger with PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. And Randy, this is a rematch from just before the stepladder, 2-3. There was a tie for the second spot. J.R. Raymond and Chris Prather, they bowled on this strips pattern. And J.R. Raymond won that second spot. Chris Prather now with a chance at a rematch. And remember that Prather played out. He played it straight up five, and uh, J.R. Raymond played in as we have a third member of our broadcast booth joining us, Sean Rash. Sean, thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks, Randy. Pleasure to join you in the booth. I, of course, would rather be bowling, but uh, happy to be back here as well with you two. Well, you, you did a great job here for this event. I know it's it's tough to to compete and uh, be a huge part of this uh, this tournament, and you pulled it off nicely. By the way, congrats to you and kudos for uh, for all the the great work that you did, and along with the the great staff here at Parkside Lanes. Thank you. Yeah, it would not be possible without the uh, the sponsors first and foremost, um, and the big one, of course, is Parkside Lanes. Without uh, having a proprietor that is willing to take a chance on an event like this means a lot to me and to our bowlers, and uh, we're very excited. We had a wonderful pro-am on Friday night. This place was packed. We were full. Uh, seven or eight pros, or uh, 27 pros bowled in total. We had seven or eight amateurs per pair, so we had over 250 people in the building bowling, not counting the couple hundred that was in here just hanging out watching and having a good time. So, Great shot there by J.R. Randy. Ring 10, shaker strike to start. Very unique styles, in my opinion. Um, both are very, very good at going straight. And as you already alluded to, Chris Prather playing straighter on this pattern than JR. JR is playing straight, but playing from fourth, fifth arrow type of straight. Well, JR looks to me like he just kind of does his one thing, which is right up the back, real heavy end over end. Prather can do that as well, but he can also get in, get around the side of it, and open the lane up. Correct. And it's very unique to watch these guys bowl because they both have very good touch at the bottom. Well, that looked right of target out of his hand, and he's going to pay for it right here. 210 for Prather on the right lane. Jeff, you had alluded to the fact that this is kind of a rematch of the uh, roll-off where Prather lost to JR on the same pattern. And I think that's the reason why JR picked this pattern. Great conversion there by Chris Prather. They are even through two. And I think it also goes down to picking this pattern because Chris went to the 37-foot pattern in the first match versus Walter Ray. And it just wants, you know, I don't know if JR is trying to play a little mental going, making Chris say, hey, you need to think a little bit. You're not on the same pattern. You can't get comfortable. You need to change your speeds or your tilts, rotation. There's so much more you have to do. After this shot, we'll get a look at at this pattern. It's such an interesting and rare look as another split. From oh. oh, he gets the break. A little early there, sir. Pin. Very fortunate, Britain. Here is the uh, the strips pattern. Here's our strips pattern for all of our viewership back home. It basically looks like a lot of mountains and valleys. Um, as you can tell, the outside part of the lane has less oil. I want to say they're in five board increments. So one through five has less volume than five through 10, 11 through 15 less, 15 through 20 and so on. It might be smaller numbers than that, but these are the old school patterns. Um, right when Randy first came out on tour, they used these a little bit. <laughs> and it was all about shot making. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if we used that that long ago, Sean. Uh, back when I started, they used a spray gun <laughs> and a liner duster and used what's called a push pull method. But and some um, basketballs, right? And yeah, well, <laughs> rumor had it that they used basketballs. Now I don't have any proof of that because that was very controversial. But um, I think the strip patterns were it got. It, it got very popular, say, about 15 years ago or so. 
Well, the whole goal this week, Randy, uh, in my mind as a competitor, as a director of an event, was to bring back shot making, patience, um, spare shooting, the whole package of the game. Um, and as you can tell, all four of these players have risen to the top through the 20 games. We bought eight games on Saturday on the PBA chameleon pattern. Scoring payment wasn't extremely high. And then we bowled six games on the PBA US Open pattern this morning, and then six games on the PBA stri uh, strips pattern. The ones that made it are very good spare shooters. They're very patient. Their ball is end over end. It's very forward. It doesn't change direction a lot. And they found a way to get it done. Uh oh. Unforced error there by JR. Well, two bad shots in a row in the same lane, and he's not real happy, and nor should he be. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a an emphasis on shot making and spare shooting. We just saw it. But, I mean, I, I like the fact that all three patterns were different, and I think that the, the patterns are really – brought out the best in the players and you look at our tournament leader Ryan Simonelli certainly no slouch on, that had good touch to it on yes, at the bottom did. you could see it and even though Chris Prather, Prather is throwing the same ball he threw on the 37 foot pattern this ball just watching them practice they put more surface on it because it is 40 feet they wanted the ball to pick up sooner otherwise this ball would be pushing through the spot at the break point and it would not have the same reaction could be a lot different as well. Uh, the surface makes it start sooner, but also tames it down off the end of the pattern. He can also do that with his hand as well. But, you know, very critical with direction, speed, and rotation out of the player's hands. Good nine there. Could have been a 4-6 split. He'll take that and move on. Chris Prather, to me, when I watch his, his game, looks like somebody bowling in, in snowshoes. He's got just incredible stability. He just looks like, like when he gets to the foul line, you couldn't knock him over with a bulldozer. Very good balance, very good shot maker. It looks like a, like a, a linebacker that's in, in, in a ready position to make a hit on a running back. He just looks so solid. And through four frames, Chris Prather leads by 14. Working on a spare in the fifth, J.R. Raymond can cut the lead down to four pins. Just a game later after their roll-off, and all of a sudden it's a completely different ball game, isn't it? And Entirely. Th their roll-off, I mean, it was all J.R. Raymond, and now it's uh, J.R. looks like he's frustrated. Chris Prather is in the lead. Giving our fans a score update in the building, folks. Guy's all over the place. I am running. Next thing you know, he's going to be selling peanuts to the uh, to the gallery on the side of the lanes. That would be cool. Could be a beer guy down the strip here. <laughs> they are giving a joke to the crowd. Knows he didn't make a great shot, but... Uh, Wanted to hit the one in the front. Best way to try to strike. Unfortunately, it was left to target, leaving the 6-10. Makeable spare. Which he converts. The winner will take on tournament leader Ryan Simonelli. It'll be interesting, Sean, to see what pattern Ryan chooses. What, what are your thoughts? I would have to guess he will pick this same pattern 
the PBA strips pattern for the six game block. He bowled 221 over on it. Uh, basically went from nowhere to the tournament leader. Oh, um, well, yeah. Then I think it's a pretty easy decision there. Yeah, he was 15th entering the second round of the semis th this afternoon. Great shot there by Prather. Yep. Leads by 16 through 5. Yeah, I think it's a, a very easy decision for Ryan Simonelli to uh, pick this same pattern. His angles are straighter. Um, keeps the ball in front of him very well. And he's very good at that when he has a chance. I remember watching Chris Prather for the first time in a, an extra frame event. I, I don't know if it was Jonesboro or uh, something a few months ago, and I, I made the mistake of calling him Chris Prather, and he let me know about it. Great shot there. A double in the seventh. So Prather, Prather, however you would like to pronounce it, he likes Prather, and he likes that shot right there. Very comfortable right now with what he's doing. He's currently sitting there talking to, to Brett Spangler, the motive ball rep. J.R. Raymond in all kinds of trouble right now, trying to make up ground on a very unforgiving oil pattern. He just is not comfortable. You can see that with his shot making. Um, and it really all started in the fourth frame after he missed that spare. Hmm. Wouldn't be surprised if he decides to move right and go up the lane just to get closer to where Chris is at. It's far from over, of course. There's three frames left, and you never know what may happen. Sean, i, I, I got to be honest with you. I, I think the last shot he threw on the right lane, that he expected that to hook, and it didn't. I mean, that just tells me that uh, the reaction he had on this pattern is not there, and... If he doesn't make a move now, he's got zero chance. That was a good shot. A little farther right with his feet. Got the 10 out. It looked like it was the angle was completely different. Correct. He, I think he paralleled everything right. Randy got much straighter up the lane. Into a better zone, so to speak. In our strips, he was uh, basically on a valley. Or a cliff. And that one, he got into the valley and the ball did the right thing. Going into the eighth frame, Chris Prather with a pretty good lead. Can all but wrap it up if he strikes here in the eighth and ninth, Randy, but anything can happen. If he strikes here in the eighth and ninth, it's over. I mean, he just needs decent count to shut, to shut out J.R. Raymond, who can only max out at 211. That's left. Three, six, nine, ten. Yeah, an open frame here, and things get interesting. This is by far the hardest spare to make on tour. On a difficult auto pattern, Randy, do you shoot this straight, or would you hook at it? I mean, I've seen I've seen you guys on tour trying to throw it straight at this. I, I think the only uh, you've got to figure out a way to curve it into this. Hard and straight. Great conversion. Straight through the... Th and once again, I'm wrong. Hey, Randy. You don't have to curve it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Chris. I don't know if he heard you or if he's... I, I think he probably heard me. But if I were him, I'd probably be paying more attention to this. Good shot there after the 3, 6, 9, 10 on the right. Here we go, ninth and 10th frame, folks. JR can strike out for a max score of 211. That would force Chris Prather to get the first one in the 10th and count to win.
Again, going back to shot making, Randy, these patterns make you stay patient. It makes you fill frames. The two most important parts about our game. Great shot there by JR in the ninth. Still has a chance, Sean. He, you know, he finally moved and, and tightened his ankles up a little bit. But, again, trying to throw a four-bagger on this pattern is tough. It's a good shot here and comes in light and shreds the rack. But I'll tell you what, two more here in the tenth. and Make Chris think about it on the lane and he just three, six, nine, ten on. Well, he'll force him to strike first ball. Oh, that was left. Oh. Well, the interesting thing about that one, Randy, is it now forces Chris to mark no matter what. Well, I, I, you know, I, you kind of felt this coming, Sean, as soon as he tightened up his ankles. Correct. You missed the head pin enough times to the right. You don't want to miss it right anymore. <laughs> that one there just seemed like you got quick in a swing and pulled down. For me, that, that almost loosens this next shot up, though. Yeah. It's free money now. Right. It's a great shot. Absolutely peered it. And I, I totally agree with you, Randy. I mean, you have nothing to lose in this position when you're the first one to finish a match. Right. When you're trailing the entire match, you have... He gets, he gets the great break with the Brooklyn, which frees up this next shot. You know? Yeah. I, I, I mean, that... Now Chris Prather needs a strike seven spare to win yep. if he gets this strike. Right. And seven spare is still very. The hard one is the strike. Very interesting. Uh, well, left again and six, 211. Or 207, I'm sorry. It still forces. Still has to get the first still hit. Still has to strike, correct. Yeah, so the first hit was the biggie. Great shots there. Well, the second ball the was. The second one. Yeah, I mean. The but the one in the ninth was pretty good. Ninth too. was good. Okay. Um, the great break. Now, how much poetic justice is there? You know what I mean? How many times have you been in this situation where your opponent does that to you? You get up, you need the hit, and you throw a great shot, and you get stone ten. Well, I solid nine against Norm Duke to lose my first ever TV show. So there you go. It's close. Oh my goodness, Randy. Blower, seven I, pin. How many times have you seen it? Wow. Great shot by Chris. Unfortunately, does not strike. He will lose and finish in third place and cash for $4,000. J.R. Raymond will move on and face tournament leader Ryan Simonelli for the tour title. And Prather missed the 10 pin on top of it. Doesn't matter at this no. point. You know, it was a crazy turn of events there, and um, JR looked like he was left for dead, and he somehow manages to throw a four-bagger to force Prather to get the first hit. Prather gets up, throws a pretty good shot, and just a massive messenger that we've seen go in front of the 10. This time he goes in front of the 7, takes the 10 out, and JR Raymond wins sitting on the bench. Randy Peterson, Jeff Goodger will be back with the championship match. Coming up next, Ryan Simonelli versus JR Raymond. And here I am with the commissioner of the PBA, Tom Clark. Tom, thanks for coming down to Aurora today and checking out the finals. It's been awesome action all day long. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Wouldn't miss it. Uh, really, really proud of what Sean Rash put together here. And, uh, you know, the best thing about the PBA is the players and the talent that you get to watch. But they're also the greatest ambassadors of the game. And Sean is at the top of the list of someone that lives, breathes, promotes bowling at every um, opportunity that he, can, that he can. And the fact that he... He really um, worked so hard to put this together. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And I'll tell you what, the excitement of these extra frame tour events between Lubbock and Jonesboro and here and all the rest of them and now coming up next week in Tamarack, you can't beat the excitement for a national tour stop, even though the formats are weekend formats. Everything's so close, battles all over the place. We had a roll off today for the first time in a long time for a step player position. It's nothing but exciting with the extra yeah, frame tour. Yeah, and the and the diversity of styles and the types of people that you see. So but now we talked about the diversity of styles out here. Yeah. People are going to see a bigger diversity of styles and one of the bigger events coming up with the PBA Falls Classic, which not only has the last event of the, last, of the uh, Extra Frame Tour with the South Point Las Vegas Open, but the PBA Team Challenge as well. And that's where you get some of the best in the game bowling together in that unique team format where they put it together, unlike the PBA League where it's the draft. 
That's right. Yeah, it's the truly it's truly the one open five man team event in professional bowling in a, in any kind of bowling. You can get your five best together and and go for it in that event, and it's really fun to watch. And last year, everybody thought that, that one team was going to win, and they didn't win. A team that nobody thought would win would win, and I'm sure the same type thing will happen again this year. Um, because when, when five people get together, it's about more than just past results and, and talent. It's about chemistry, and uh, team chemistry means so much in bowling, just like any other team sport. And then the day after that team challenge wraps up, it's the PBA League draft for 2017, so there's going to be excitement with that. Well, who's going to remain on their teams as protected picks? Who's going to get drafted? That's always an exciting moment for the PBA players yeah, and, and fans. Absolutely, and it's a rough day for a lot of people that really want to be a part of that. Cause the PBA League has grown a lot because of a uh, relationship with, in Portland, Maine, uh, to be uh, the type of event that everybody wants to be there. So not getting onto a team is going to be heartbreaking for some people, and that's tough. But you know what? That's sports. And uh, uh, it's kind of life, and uh, but but the, those are the people I think of the most that day are the people on the bubble that maybe don't get in. But it's exciting to watch an extra frame, and then the next day we start the U.S. Open, so it's an incredible uh, couple of weeks in Las Vegas coming up uh, pretty soon. Yeah, and then of course to wrap up 2016, the Geico World Series of Bowling Eight. The most exciting two weeks in bowling, no doubt about that. All the different animal patterns, the world championship show live on ESPN, and yeah. it's the event I always look forward to every year. As before, even before I worked at Extra Frame, just as a fan, because it's just two weeks of total coverage. Yeah, it's uh, we're really proud of what the way the World Series of Bowling has grown. I mean, um, from just a small idea to being the the greatest event in professional bowling and bringing people in from over 25 different countries, the best bowlers in the world, and going at it every single day in really intense competition where every single ball matters and uh, and doing it at the bowling stadium makes it even more special because it's like this hollowed ground for bowling and so yeah we can't wait for that. It's, it's uh, it is the, the pinnacle of the season. And yet, then I start thinking ahead and you say in February, we've got three straight weeks of live major championship bowling uh, on ESPN. So first you have all the World Series starting December 11th with the live PBA World Championship. And then we get through all the World Series events and then we come on in February with uh, the, the Players Championship, the Tournament of Champions, the Masters, all back to back to back. And um, so bowling fans are going to be in for a, a great few months here coming up. Yeah, so tell your friends of that already Extra Frame subscribers, get on to Extra Frame, watch those shows on CBS Sports Network, another one Wednesday night, and watch all those ESPN shows. Tom, thanks for the time. I know right, you're going to be here with your son, Rory. Yeah, I brought my son, brought my son down to watch, and he's having a great time. He's, you know, when we walked in, we were watching qualifying, and on one pair, uh, Anthony Simonson was bowling with Walter Ray Williams Jr. And for for Rory, Anthony Simonson's the guy he's been watching. He throws two-handed, and he watched him win the Masters. And I explained to Rory how great Walter Ray was throughout my whole life, you know, really growing up. And so. Uh, uh, it's amazing to see that level of talent and the different age groups that are able to succeed in professional bowling today. Really fun for anybody. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the day with Rory. Thanks, Thanks again, Tom. All right, getting ready for our title match. Randy Peterson, Jeff Goodger, Brian Simonelli versus J.R. Raymond.
<laughs> All right, so Ryan Simonelli chose the strip pattern, and J.R. Raymond <laughs> wants to change patterns. Sean Rash, the instigator. Okay, I wonder who the favorite is. All right, Ryan Simonelli, definitely uh, your fan favorite. Getting a hug from Chucky Love, Chuck Gardner. Uh, looks like J.R. Raymond's going to start this title match. Ryan Simonelli bombed them on this strip pattern earlier. And a nice opening shot. And I think JR probably relieved that he actually hit the head pin. What a comeback, though, against Prather. He catches that double. The Brooklyn first ball in the 10th, and then follows it up with a pocket flush hit. And then a whiff on the 10 pin. All right. As if Ryan Simonelli needed more help. I think he probably knocked down more pins on this pattern than anybody else today. Yeah, came from nowhere to number one. And there's 10 right there. Any chance you can replay that? Because that was filthy. Let's do it, Randy. Watch the pin action of the Ryan Express. Oh, that's just dirty. Ryan Simonelli. Left arm looks like a leg. It's so massive. Probably the biggest difference of any player out here from one arm to the next, but and here's why you put power, speed, and rotation on a bowling ball so that you can carry off hits. J.R. Raymond knows that he is in for a fight. He knew it going into this title match. Ryan Simonelli destroyed this oil pattern. From out of the cut to tournament leader in the last game, J.R. Raymond's going to have to bowl the game of his life, or this is going to be a rout. <laughs> Simonelli just missing out on Player of the Year honors last year to Jason Belmonte on the tour. And with another win here, he'll have two. Remember, he won in Maine earlier, an extra frame event, right after the league finals. This will give him win number two with another major, excuse me, another two majors. Another two majors to go and the World Series in Reno in December. One of those majors, the U.S. Open, he is the defending champion. He made the show in the World Championship last year as well. So recent success in those majors coming up. Spare for Raymond. 
Simonelli on the front two now coming up, looking to make it the front four and build a huge early lead. And then uh, some timely carry for Ryan Simonelli. A little bit up the back on this one, looking for a little help, and gets it. Right now, J.R. Raymond's got to be feeling like he brought a knife to a gunfight. Right? The best hearing in the entire <laughs> world. <laughs> oh my God! Is he I reading didn't, your mind. I didn't know he was Spider-Man. Oh! What a what a funny sport, huh? Yes. Y y you trip the six pin like he does, and then you come back with a shot like that, and you get nine. So many fun people here at Parkside Lanes. It's just been a great couple of days, and I know a great week for the players. Just an awesome event. Sean Rash and, and the folks here had a great job. Down the our last six and a half frames of competition. J.R. Raymond looking for his first strike this game through the middle again. Just in that zone where a little too far to the right, and I mean a little, an inch, uh, is going to be light, and then a little up the lane, and it's going to be through the face like that shot. I've got people standing next to me that are recording this on their cell phones. We've got Facebook Live going. Hi, everybody. What's up? Um, just a great event. Just a great event, man. It's pretty awesome. Players coming up and thanking you and I for, for doing the the uh, telecast or the uh, uh, extra frame cast. Webcast? That too. Yes. All kinds of casts. There's, yeah. I, in fact, I've seen people here with casts. Yes. Yeah. I have as well. Multiple casted people. Yeah. There you go right there, Gooch. Yes. I'm, I'm currently on some of the illegally... <laughs> transmitted footage during our exclusive rights to webcast event. Wow, talk about a buzz killer. <laughs> J.R. Raymond trying to make light of his not so pleasant ball reaction. Yeah, he's saying, if you, if you couldn't hear it, he's saying to the crowd, one hooks, one doesn't. Yep. At some point, you may want to think about jumping ship and changing zones. You know, maybe moving to that to that zone to the right. Although, at times, you, you just have to dance with the one you brought. And he, he's been playing in that part of the lane the entire time on this pattern. But right now, it's all about Ryan Simonelli. Down lane movement. Ryan will reset. It's making it look like a house shot. Yeah, just uh, take another look at this shot right here. Is there anything wrong with that uh, no other than the fact that it was really loud <laughs> right yes yeah nothing wrong with that no
Ugh. Ryan Simonelli is having a good time on this pair of lanes. Uh, this could have easily been six in a row. Look at the seven get kicked late. And right now, you, you really got to feel for J.R. Raymond. He's had a great week, and, and it's been a great event. But right now, he's got to feel like a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. Strike for Raymond, first of the game. See if he can build on that and try to put any sort of pressure on Ryan Simonelli. I can't tell if that was a ball change or not. If it was good for him, it was a ball change. I'm getting a nod from very knowledgeable bowling people standing right in front of me. Um, thank you for that. And you're right. I mean, this is the time JR needs to somehow just pure it for the next four frames. Bless you. And nice ball change and two very nice shots. Remember what happened in his last match, okay? I'm not saying that the same thing's going to happen here, but I'm just saying, you know? We said it earlier, it, bowling is funny. It doesn't take a lot on this pattern. But the way Ryan Simonelli is dialed in, I don't foresee that happening, but you never know. And there we go. Just like that. Isn't it amazing? Ryan tried to save that one at the bottom. No chance. And you can see he got a little deep in the downswing from the inside. Fed the ball left. Whiffing the headpin. This is no gimme. The 1, 3, 6, 10. Yeah, nice cover. J.R. Raymond still possible, 232. Ryan Simonelli's at 225 with three frames to go. Chuck Gardner in the background there watching his man, staffer Ryan Simonelli. That's a good nine. Got a look at the late fall of the 610. <laughs> Chuck Gardner telling Ryan Simonelli to watch his push away. One of the things Mike Jazz now worked with him. Oh, gosh, what was it, about a year and a half ago, two years ago? Jazz now changed his push away. Simonelli made a big change in his game, and that's when we really saw a different Ryan Simonelli on tour. And just like that, folks, we got us a match. J.R. Raymond makes the change, the ball change and has enough confidence in it to come back and make three really nice shots. Now, here's the biggie right here. Can he strike here in the ninth to set up the tenth frame? Because this will really give, some, something, give Ryan Simonelli something to think about. Again, max score, J.R. Raymond, 232. Max score, Simonelli, 244. J.R. can't shut Ryan out, but he can sure make him think about it. Yeah, what a great shot. Great, great shot. J.R. Raymond left for dead after five frames, makes a ball change, and he's right back in the match with a four-bagger, and it's all about execution. He had enough conviction to make the change, make the ball change, whatever adjustment on the approach and targeting, and then just executed four perfect shots. And Simonelli right up immediately, not waiting. Ah. 
Yeah, that looked pretty good right out of his hand. And one more strike, and he'll be in the 230s, but two more, and he's going to shut out J.R. Raymond. That's what you call high flush there, boss. 6'10 got taken out by the vortex the ball created when it went through the pins. Joining us again, Sean Rash. Thought I'd come when it's important. Thank you. Simonelli up in the 10th. Trying to shut out J.R. Raymond. Oh. That was pretty good, Randy. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think on a scale of 1 to 10, that was great. That was the straightest swing he's had all game. Nine spare to win. That was some sick execution there. So nine spare to win. Anything less, we have a possibility of a tie or J.R. Raymond still has a chance. Got to go. Needs a spare. Yeah, and Sean, you're right. That, that's a really good eight. That could have been five or six. Um, you could tell just by this finish right here how he kind of helped it. Helped it, came out, came out of it. Yeah, and if it, if it was seven, he has a chance to lose. Correct. Now, worst is a tie. J.R. Raymond. 232. Still has life. Yeah, if that if that four pin doesn't fall. Well, as a competitor, Randy, and a winner, you want the ball in your hand. And JR has it. His fate is in his own hands. Great shot there. I'll tell you what, though. Throwing a seven-bagger on this pattern is a pretty tall order. And nobody will be more impressed than myself if J.R. Raymond's able to throw two more here to tie. Great first shot there in the 10th, Randy. Needs two more, like you said, to tie. But this one matters more than the next one because you've got to have it. Same routine, deep breath. And go through the process. It's got a hook. Oh, oh. Ryan Simonelli is your PVA Extra Frame Parkside Lanes Open champion. First ever, his seventh title, Randy. Second title of the year. And Unbelievable Peterson. finish there of J.R. Raymond, 221. Jeff, I'm going to join Randy on, his, on the stage, buddy. Thank you, Sean. Sean Rash, Randy Peterson. We'll talk to our winner momentarily. All right, everybody, I'm with your champion, Ryan Simonelli. Ryan winning for the second time this season. You also have a couple of second-place finishes, and right now you certainly have to throw your name into consideration for Player of the Year honors. What was going through your mind uh, going into the title match with all that was on the line for you this season? Well, I kind of felt like I was on a little bit of a downhill slide um, with the, the runner-ups. You know, you starts to weigh on your mind a little bit, and uh, I just didn't want to fall off of that wave so fast. So um, it's nice to get back. It was a quite a grind. Uh, never on the show the entire tournament, and uh, I've been working really hard with the uh, the perseverance and. You know, I've been I've been going to church more lately, and and I asked for some some strength, for some courage, and uh, it really showed this week. What was it about this strip pattern that uh, appealed to you? Because quite honestly, you were the only player in the field that made them look easy. <laughs> you know, it was it was it was nothing. It was a little bit of panic. Um, I had planned after practice to play out. The out looked really good, and um, we we had a couple practice pairs on um, before we started, and. Uh, it looked really bad, and so I had to do something drastic. And um, I knew my U.S. Open look was good in uh, around the third arrow, and um, I just I planned on it being house characteristics being the reason. And uh, 
it seemed to be the case as, as long as I was inside of the track and I could use that friction to my left, I could create some hold. And finally, uh, Sean made reference to the fact that you're staying at, at his house? Yeah, apparently, I, I don't know, I owe him dinner or something at least, right? Yeah, I think he's going to charge your rent now. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> Congratulations, Ryan. Thank you. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks, Randy. There's Ryan Simonelli. Seven career PBA Tour titles. Next extra frame action coming up October 7th from Sawgrass Lanes in Tamarack, Florida. PBA extra frame reality check Tamarack Classic. Jeff Goodger, Randy Peterson, Phil Brylow will join you October 7th live on extra frame. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, Sean, like, like he's not shy. Here you go. CEO, Commissioner Tom Clark.
uh, playing the gutter, throwing strong, dull balls, and uh, it was it was a nice change to to play a different part of the lane. Um, I guess more or less I proved something to myself, and um, that felt really good. So. Um, I just want to thank all the fans for staying out, watching us the whole time. Uh, I hope we put on a good enough show for you guys. I hope we get to come back again next year. And thank you for the honor. Thank you. Certainly, last but not least, uh, things happen really fast when you're up here. Um, this man right here went out of his way, not just the last couple days, not just the last three days, the last week, but for months, um, everyone here that knows Sean knows the quality individual that he is. Uh, it took a lot of Sean's convincing for us to host this. We've never done this sort of thing before. We're very skeptical. He said, hey, I'll be there for you, my friend. And he was every single step of the way. Each and every one of you that were here all weekend saw it. And that was maybe one-fifth of what Sean did through this whole thing. So, oh my god, I couldn't believe I forgot to single him out. But. Uh, uh, Thanks again, buddy. You did one hell of a job. All right. There is uh, so many people to thank. I thank the sponsors a minute ago, but uh, Kurt and Mel can stay up here and let her sit. This ball is uh, signed by all 27 guys. This is for you. possible that work their tails off. We'll start with uh, the owner's wives. These two are the ones that say yes and get the checkbook. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to uh, bring my wife and daughter Kaylee up. These two, I haven't seen them all over.
right, everyone, that is a wrap. I want to say thank you so much to the fans for coming out all weekend long to our 23 sponsors for making the first ever Parkside Lanes Open a success. Thank you to everybody that pulled the program, that came out to the barbecue, that bought bowling balls, that bought t-shirts. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Drive safe going home tonight. I surely hope we can come back next year. Thank you.